About a month ago, I took delivery of the HP Spectre X360, the 15 inch model, fully decked out, of course, running that Coffee Lake processor with a 4K display, the dedicated NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design, everything you'd want in a convertible, but I wanted to see how were the thermals, how was the battery life, and how was the overall performance. Well, I'm glad I did. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my full review of the HP Spectre X360 15 inch, coming up. Like these kind of videos? Why not hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell? This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter because that's where I post all the latest updates. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out my unboxing and first look video. I go over a lot of things I won't cover here in this review. So if you haven't done so, I'll put the link below. Check it out. Now I went over the specs in my unboxing video, so check it out if you haven't done so. But for those who didn't, here's a quick rundown. The key things to know here, this is running the Coffee Lake processor, eighth generation, six cores. It also has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. Now the price of my review unit is $2,049.99 and that's pretty decked out, but you could also get a SKU at Best Buy for $15.99. And with that, you're getting that beautiful 4K display, but you're also getting an MX150 GPU as opposed to the GTX 1050 Ti. When it comes to the ports, I was actually pretty happy. On the left side, you have your power port, a full-size HDMI port. That's great if you want to connect to a projector, TV, or monitor. That's always good. Now, on the right side, you have your micro SD card slot. Kind of wish it was a full-size SD card slot. You have a privacy switch to turn off the webcam and a USB 3.1 Type-A port. That's always great to have. Now you also get two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now the key thing here is that these support four lanes. That means if you want to connect to multiple 4K monitors or to an external GPU, you have that option. Now because it has that gem cut design, they put the power button in the corner. You won't accidentally hit it, which was a problem on previous models. So I'm happy with this design choice for sure. And of course you get your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, worked well, no interference, no static when I plugged in my wired headphones, all good on that front. Now for 15.6 inch laptop, it's not the lightest, it's at 4.81 pounds or 2.18 kilograms and you can get it in two different colors. The Poseidon blue which I have here and of course the dark ash silver which we've seen in previous models. But of course you not only want your laptop to look good, you want it to perform really well and that's the case here with this Core i7 Coffee Lake processor with its six cores. It also has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And as you can see from these results, it did very well, especially when you compare it to some of its competition in this category. And of course, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. There are better options out there if that's what you want to do with your AAA titles. Having said that, you can do some gaming on this, of course. That's thanks to that GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. And as you can see from some of the benchmarks, it can definitely handle those games. You might have to turn down some of the settings if you want to get better playable frame rates. Having said that, this is a very good machine to do video editing, 4K video editing, productivity tasks such as Microsoft Office, as well as Photoshop and other things. This is a very powerful machine that gives you that ability. Not only is it portable, but it packs a punch as well. And I like the ability to control the performance via the HP Command Center. What that allows you to do is choose the thermal profile that suits your needs the best. Now you can control the performance out of this. Obviously you can eke out more battery life depending on which thermal profile you choose. I like that ability that they give you with this laptop. Now let's talk about the thermals on this device because that was an issue in previous models. Now they do employ dual fans and radiators with up to three heat pipes with this. And what that means is they've radically redesigned the thermals on this device. The question is, did it work? And the answer is yes, for the most part it did. It did get a little bit warm on the bottom at 37.2 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit above the comfort threshold. But for the most part, these are improved thermals. And when it comes to the SSD, really good reads, pretty fast writes. I thought it could have been a little bit faster, but they are fast nonetheless, so good on that front. 
Okay, let's talk battery life. Now, HP claims up to 15 hours of battery life. Well, on my test, I didn't quite get 15 hours. Of course, I got eight hours and 10 minutes, which for a 4K laptop, that's actually pretty good. Now, it does have a pretty robust 84 watt hour battery, and it certainly did well, better than the 4K HDR version of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme, one of its direct competitors. And of course, if you do need to plug in, it does come with a 135 watt power adapter, which is pretty robust, and it takes about hour to get to 80% and about hour and 58 minutes to get to a full charge. Not too bad considering the size of the battery. Now, of course, you can charge via the Thunderbolt 3 port, but I kind of like that power pin connector. Freeze up your two Thunderbolt 3 ports for other things. Okay, let's talk about the display. One of the best features of this laptop, it's 15.6 inches, 4K, 3840 by 2160, and for those keeping score, 282 pixels per inch. It's really an excellent display with really deep black, some very vibrant colors, covers the color gamut really well. Excellent for those creative professionals out there that want an excellent 4K panel. This is definitely it. You get a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which is good for media consumption, but I kind of wish it did have a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, better for productivity tasks. But of course, you do get a pretty bright display at 299 nits. Now, I mistakenly said it was 255 nits in my X1 Extreme video that I just posted. It's actually 299, which isn't too bad, although it's not the brightest in the category, that's for sure. Now you do get slimmer side bezels and top and bottom bezels are slimmed down as well from previous models and as you can see really modern looking very nice design as far as I'm concerned when it comes to this display and its bezels. Now one thing to be aware of there is an optional full HD display with optional shore view that gets up to 650 nits in brightness that's actually really good certainly above the 300 nits that you get with the 4k display. Now, of course, this display has a digitizer on it. It uses the Entrig pen technology. That's the same as a Surface pen, and the pen that comes with this does have 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Good for taking notes, good for sketching out artwork. Now, there is an optional HP Tilt pen. For a little bit more money, you get some Bluetooth functionality and, of course, that Tilt functionality as well. So if you're a digital artist, that may be an option you might want to check out. But I thought the included pen did work well. Taking notes in a meeting was really good. This will be great for a student in a classroom as well. Now, if you do opt to take notes with this in tablet mode, it does get a little bit heavy due to its size. So I would use it on a table or a desk, of course. And since this is a convertible laptop, you can put it into the different modes. Here you have tent mode, which is great for consuming media, recipes in the kitchen. The same goes for the stand mode. That's great for watching Netflix, YouTube, and the like. Now, of course, you could always put it into that tablet mode. And as I said, it can get a little bit heavy when you're taking notes with it. So again, use it on a table or a desk, that's for sure. But me, my favorite way to use this laptop is, of course, laptop mode. Now, one thing you'll notice is it does have some pretty sturdy metal hinges and other laptops that are convertibles. I've noticed a lot of screen wobble as a result of the hinges not being that great. That's not the case here. I thought the engineers at HP did a really good job. You will get a little bit of screen wobble, of course, but not very much. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I was equally impressed at 1.5 millimeters of key travel. It was a pleasure to type on. It also has a multi-stage backlight, which lights up really well, making it very clear and allows you to work in a very dark or dimly lit room that's always great and for those who crunch numbers for a living you're gonna love the numeric keypad that's a nice addition on this 15 inch laptop not something you normally see on these 15 inch convertibles that's for sure now HP still uses synaptic drivers when it comes to the touchpad it worked okay two finger scrolling worked well all your gestures work as advertised although I do prefer precision drivers I've mentioned that in other videos I've done but then again these synaptic drivers aren't too bad touchpad worked as advertised now I went over the sound in the unboxing video, so check it out if you haven't done so. So I'm not gonna repeat it here, but having said that, it does use Bang & Olufsen quad speakers, they're four obviously, with a discrete amplifier, and they also advertise bigger speaker houses or boxes, so you're getting a more rich, full sound. And for the most part, they've really come through. Gone are the days where HP was making some pretty hollow, weak sounding speakers. No longer you're getting distortion at the highest 100% levels. Here, they did a really fantastic job. Kudos to HP for really improving the speakers. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP Spectre X360 15 inch. Uh, it's a Windows Hello compatible camera. So if you wanna use it for logging in with face recognition, you can. It's good for Skype, it's good for video conferencing. It's a uh, decent quality. I wouldn't say it's the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst. I would give the Surface products having the best 
webcams, by the way. This is uh, definitely okay if you need to do it, like I said, Skype or any kind of video conferencing. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. And I really love the fact that you get a privacy switch located on the right side that turns off the webcam. So if you want more privacy, you have that option. But keep in mind, it doesn't turn off the microphones. And in addition to having a Windows Hello camera, you also have a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard on the right side. Setup was easy and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. Now HP asked the reviewers not to open up this laptop, but I can tell you what's inside and what is upgradable. So when you open it up, of course, there'll be two fans and you will notice that the Wi-Fi card is swappable as well as the SSD drive. But as far as the RAM that's soldered on, you're limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. There is no 32 gigabyte option, which is a little bit of a miss in my book. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the HP Spectre X360 15 inch? Absolutely, excellent 4K display, Really good keyboard, very good battery life, very good performance out of the Coffee Lake processor. Improved thermals all come together to make this a winner. But of course, it's not a perfect laptop. There are a couple of areas they can improve on. The display could be brighter, and I kind of wish they used the precision drivers as opposed to the synaptics drivers for the touchpad. But these are not deal breakers by any stretch. This is an excellent laptop, excellent convertible here for early 2019. I'm going to give it a score of 93%, making the HP Spectre X360 15 inch worth your money. So what do you think about this HP Spectre X360 15 inch? Really impressive. Excellent job by HP. Gorgeous 4K display, although I would have liked to have seen it a little bit brighter. Really good battery life considering you are getting that very high resolution 4K display. Good performance out of that Coffee Lake processor as well as the GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. A very good dedicated GPU indeed. Now as far as the design, I love that gem cut design. Very functional as well as looking good. And it's also a major fingerprint magnet so you will be wiping it down so keep that in mind. But when it's clean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, it's not the thinnest convertible out there, but you are, they are packing a lot in this, so you got to keep that in mind. Very good array of port selection, so that's pretty good. This is my choice for the 15-inch convertible laptop market. If you want to put this head-to-head -head with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme that I just reviewed, this actually gets my nod. Better thermals, better battery life in a sense, if you're going with that 4K display versus the 4K HDR of the X1 Extreme, this actually does better. And the performance was comparable. So this is the one I would go with. This gives you more versatility. It has a pen as far as this is concerned. It's a convertible, so it folds all the way back. You have the different modes you can put it into. So again, this is a more versatile device. The build quality is off the charts. It's very premium and very high end. But this is definitely my editor's choice for the 15 inch convertible and rightfully so. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. Thank you.